Okay, so in this lesson we're going to talk about the life and ministry of Jesus. Now, I know this is kind of surprising, but we're only going to talk about Jesus for two lessons. And we're not going to talk about um, the historical criticism of Jesus himself. We're not going to really talk about redaction theory that much, um, you know, literary criticism and that kind of stuff. We're just kind of going to blow, blow past that. And the reason for that is because the textbooks already give a pretty good you know, summation of those things. And my purpose is not that. My purpose is to help people understand the New Testament and uh, kind of understand how it fits into everything. So, the Twelve Apostles, um, people are surprised by this. Peter, Simon, you know, two names there. Um, he is mentioned in, in the book of Acts. Okay, He's the one who does the preaching at the beginning and um, the one that confesses Jesus as Christ that then, you know, Satan, or Jesus calls Satan. <laughs> um, there's Andrew, which isn't mentioned that much. Uh, there's James and John, both sons of Zebedee. Then there's uh, Philip of Bethsaida, as, who he's mentioned as. There's Bar Bartholomew, also called Nathaniel of Cana. Excuse me. There's Thomas, also called the Twin. And there's Matthew, also called Levi, son of Alphaeus. There's James, the son of Alphaeus. There's Th uh, Thaddeus, um, also called Judas, the son of James, who's also called not Iscariot. Uh, <laughs> then there's Simon the Cananean, who's not Peter Simon. Um, and he was a zealot. And then there's uh, Judas Iscariot, um, son of Simon, replaced by Matthias in the book of Acts. Now, it's interesting to note that neither James mentioned our Jesus' brother, James. Okay, and we'll talk about this in the next slide, um, the disbelief of Jesus' family. Um, and But if you look at the Twelve, there's a very, a really wide... Um, Really wide variance here. There's there's fishermen, there's zealots, there's tax collectors. I mean, you really have a wide variety of, of people here. Now, if you look at the at the two um, at the, at the Jameses here, James son of Zebedee, and where is that other James? Um, uh, James the son of Alphaeus. Neither of these Jameses wrote the book of James. Instead, that was written by Jesus' brother, James. Um, now, as far as the Gospel of John, um, if you look here, the um, the the John, um, it was Jesus didn't have a brother mentioned to John. I, I always heard it that, that John was, was Jesus' brother and that he wrote the Gospel of John. Well, there's no evidence of that. Um, on the contrary, it seems that John is the son of Zebedee. Um, the the disciple who who Jesus loved. Um, there is no other um, no other of the twelve who's called John. Um, only John the son of Zebedee is called John, and um, so that would mean that he's probably the same John that wrote the uh, Gospel of John. Um, okay, so. Um, as far as him being called the disciple that Jesus Jesus loved, um, it seems like they had a close friendship. Um, now, I'm open to the idea that John is still Jesus' brother. Um, just haven't found any evidence to say that. So Jesus' family, um, his parents were called Joseph and Mary. Now we now we know Joseph really wasn't the father, you know, um, because it was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you know. Um, so there was no sex. She had uh, virgin birth. Um, then he had unnamed sisters. Now, the idea that the sisters were cousins was an idea to, to prove that, uh, or to affirm Mary as being perpetually a virgin. Now, um, if you're part of the uh, Protestant church, you really don't have to worry about that too much. Um, but I will say this, um, if you're part of the, you know, uh, more orthodox side there. Um, it, it doesn't. It, it, G, Mary having sex with her husband doesn't make her sinful. That makes her uh, righteous. Um, this is mentioned more in, in New Testament literature, but um, just consider that. Um, so the the brothers that are mentioned are Jude, um, I believe, also called Judas. Um, I'm not positive about that, but I believe he's also called Judas. Um, there's James, who wrote the book of James. There's Joseph, who's also called Joseph. 
and there's Simon. Um, now, whether he had other brothers doesn't really mention, but those are the brothers that specifically mentions, and his hometown specifically mentions them in both accounts, um, and in both of the Gospels where, where the story is mentioned, um, where he's rejected at Nazareth. So, it seems as though John is not one of them. So, uh, his family um, called him crazy. Mark 3, 20-21 20 uh, mentions this, and then later how, how they're trying to you know pull him away from the group. Um, and then in John 7, 5, it mentions that his family didn't even believe in him. Um, so it seems that you know the Jude who wrote the book of Jude, who was his brother, the uh, James who wrote the book of James, who was his brother, um, it seems as though they really didn't believe until after the resurrection. In fact, one of them, I believe it's James, gets his own special uh, revelation from the Lord. Um, Jesus comes specifically to him. Um, so that's, you know, um, substantial. Um, but I just thought that was funny how out of all the 12, it seems as though not a single one was related to him. Um, whereas David's uh, mighty men, there were a few of his relatives in that. Um, so, <clears throat> That sums up that. Oh, and also the home, his hometown uh, rejected him. And possibly, it, it's a little bit vague there, they might have been referring to him as an illegitimate child kind of idea. Not illegitimate in the sense of, of not being born of, of, of Joseph. Um, illegitimate is kind of the wrong word. But um, as far as being born out of wedlock, it seems like potentially there, there may be some conflict in that. I might be reading too much into that. Um, yeah, ask someone smarter, um, and I'll kind of explain that. So that takes us to Jesus' life. Um, he was born in 6 BC, um, more than likely, as because of Herod the Great's reign. And when he died, um, which was in 4 BC, um, we can kind of date it to this. Uh, Matthew 1.18 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child by the Holy Spirit. And Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her, planned to send her away secretly. But when he had cons uh, considered this, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child who has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's a few things to notice. I know there's a lot of controversy with this. First off, um, understand the context, understand how gracious Joseph really was being. Um, secondly, um, and I'll let you do your own study on that. Um, uh, secondly, <clears throat> um, Joseph did not know that Mary had conceived by the Holy Spirit. Once again, remember that women really didn't have as much of a say so as men, especially in Judaism. Um, some of the Roman women had a, had a little bit more rights, I guess you could say, but or freedom, I don't know, whatever you want to say. But um, So just uh, do a study on that before you take too harshly um, Joseph's actions. Um, but it was very gracious of him. So Jesus' public ministry started at about 26. Uh, Matthew 3:13 through 17. Uh, mentions this when um, when Jesus is baptized. Then Jesus arrived from Galilee at the Jordan, coming to John to be baptized by him. But John tried to prevent him, saying, "I have need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me?" But Jesus answered, answering, said to him, "Permit it this at this time, for in this way it is fitting for us to fulfill the, um, all righteousness." And then the Holy Spirit descends, and the Father speaks to him from above. Um, Luke four one through four. Um, let me turn there right quick. Um, mentions um, the temptation of Jesus, and it says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led around by the Spirit in the wilderness for 40 days, being tempted by the devil. And he ate nothing during those days, and when they had ended, he became hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell the stone to become bread. And Jesus answered him, It is written, Man shall not live on bread alone. Um, so... <clears throat> Uh, it's interesting to note um, where Jesus, where, where the Gospel of Luke places his, Jesus' temptation. But um, okay, see, like if you look at if you look at Luke, chapter three ends with the genealogy of Jesus, showing that he did in fact come from Adam. Now, why is that important? Because 
all sin came through Adam, and Jesus is the second Adam. So then in chapter 4, it shows that he was tempted just like people. He was really fully human. He was tempted. And then that he still succeeded. Um, and then it takes to Jesus' public ministry. So um, once again, Luke kind of emphasizes Jesus' humanity. We'll get in time in a second. So then it takes us to his Galilean ministry. Um, this is about 27 uh, AD. <clears throat> and Mark chapter 139, 1 verse 39, um, says, And he went into their synagogues throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. And then in 423 through 25, it mentions about, um, if I can find it, uh, if anyone has ears to hear, hear, let him hear. And he was saying to them, Take care what you listen to by your standard measure, it will be measured to you. And more will be given you besides. Um, and um, it mentions about how people followed him and whatnot. Um, when he was doing his Galilean ministry. It actually mentions about how people from Tyre and Sidon uh, came as well. Um, well, anyways, um, uh, it, it is interesting that his Galilean ministry ended kind of rocky. Um, you know, they had people coming from all around to listen, but then um, it ends with, uh, you know, a crowd who misunderstands him, um, trying to make him a king, make him king, and then it also ends with the religious leaders um, irritated over over a dispute that ends with them wanting him killed. So you know, then he he obviously goes um, outside of Galilee, um, Matthew 15 and 20 verses 21 through 25 says. Um, Jesus went away from there and withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that region came out and began to cry out, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David, my daughter is cruelly demon-possessed. But he did not answer her a word, and his disciples um, came and implored him, saying, Send her away, because she keeps shouting at us. But he answered and said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and began to bow down before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. But she said, Yes, Lord, but even the dogs feed on the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, O oh, woman, your faith is great. It shall be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed at once. Um, great, great faith there. But anyways, um, <clears throat> so you just kind of see Jesus' ministry developing there um, with his birth you know, and all the different events there. Now, what about his events between his birth and, and his public ministry? Um, none of that is really very well attested, um, and so we can't ultimately know if it has historical basis or not. Um, but either way, it didn't make it into the gospel, and so from a Christian view, um, you know, we we don't have to we don't have to read it, or whatever. It's not it's not uh, biblical. God would have preserved it if He wanted it preserved. Um, and as you can see, His Galilean ministry kind of kind of gets off and is doing all the, all the stuff and. People, you can kind of see how people are, are misunderstanding him as a person. Uh, so then his Perean and Judean ministry, uh, this is in about 29, um, Luke 10 and 29 AD. Obviously, I hope you know that we've been talking about ADs all this time. Um, you know, he was born in 6 BC, but his public ministry started in 26 AD. And then Galilean ministry was in 27 AD. Jesus travels outside of Galilee was in 29 AD. Um, oops, going the wrong way. And this pre and Judean ministry was also in, in 29. Um, so Luke um, 10, 1 through 3, talks about, um, Now after this the Lord appointed 70 others and sent, him, and sent them in prayer, prayers ahead of him to every city um, and place where he himself was going to come. Um, so, uh, And then Jesus' last week is in 30 AD. Uh, this was in April. Um, and then his resurrection ascension was in April uh, through June. Um, you know, he was resurrected, but then he he, ascend, he he ascends in June after after spending some time with the with um, the leaders, with the people. Um, Mark 11:15. And when I say leaders, I mean the people who would become the leaders in the church. Um, so Mark 11:15 through 19. 
um, sends. Um, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But to him, to but to what shall I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces who call out to other children and say, "We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We sang a, a, a dirge, and you did not mourn." Um, I'm sorry, I'm in Matthew. I was thinking this doesn't uh, this doesn't really make any sense. <laughs> I wonder why it doesn't make any sense. Mark chapter 11, 15 through 19. Um, then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were bearing, buying and selling in the temple and overturned the, the tables um, of the money changers. Um, now, obviously, if this was a, a class on the Gospels, we would talk about his last week in great depth, but obviously it's not, and so that would wait, it would take up too much time for this class. I'm just trying to help you understand the idea um, of... Um, of, of what's happening in, in, in Jesus' life. Um, now, it is important, though, I'm, I'm going to go back for a second. Uh, I mentioned here, let's see, where is it? Okay, I mentioned here Mark, and I put down 4, 23 through 25 because that's what the book quoted. That reference is actually wrong. I was It was actually the reference um, in his Galilean ministry where people are, are coming out to listen to him. Uh, and they're coming from, it says that, they're, that they came from Tyre and Sidon, um, really coming from all around uh, to hear what he has to say. And it's just very interesting, um, this is the, the way that the events kind of unfold. Um, you know, uh, um, oh, here we go, it's in 3.7. Jesus withdrew to the sea with his disciples, and a great multitude from Galilee followed, and also from Judea, and from Jerusalem, and from Edomia, and beyond the Jordan, and the vicinity of Tyre and Sidon. A great number of people heard of all that he was doing and came to him. Um, so you can see kind of the, the how how to what extent the uh, the Galilean ministry was really successful, um, and it just kind of branched out and went further and further. Um, so uh, the Synoptic Gospels use a different calendar than John's Gospel. That's worth noting because a lot of people get really confused about the chronology of events. Um, and the reason for that is because John was written so much longer after the Synoptics. Um, so. As far as what Jesus taught, first off, it's important to note that all of the New Testament is, ba is built off the Old Testament. Um, just because the Pharisees were misusing the Old Testament doesn't mean that the Old Testament has no place. And, and Paul, I mean, Jesus really um, shows us how the law applies more than anything. You know, Jesus talked a lot about the law, and he was going to establish the law of grace. Well, why is that a thing? Because just because you're under the law of grace doesn't mean you live as lawless. Paul talks about this. So it is important to note that he avoided jargon. He didn't really get caught up in you know the political, this is how the Christians talk. You know, it, he didn't really get caught up in that. Uh, but he did force his audience into a reflection. He didn't just come out and say stuff. He, he, put, he put it in a way that caused them where they had to just sit back and kind of think about it. Uh, Matthew 16, 25 says, uh, for whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. See, he says stuff like it, it's reversed how you would expect it. Uh, he told parables ranging, ranging from short story, a very short saying, um, a parable by definition. Let me say this differently. He taught parables. Now, a parable by definition is a either a short saying or a Almost an allegorical story is how uh, the book describes it. Now in Luke 8, uh, 4 through 10, uh, Jesus tells, tells a parable um, about the, the seed. Um, where is it? Uh, the, the sower. Um, and he ta it says in verse 9, or verse 10, um, To you has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest of it, to the rest it is in parables, so that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Um, so, um, he also used illustrations um, based off of examples from the day. Um, you know, oftentimes we try to preach exactly like Jesus did. You know, use examples from your day. Jesus used the example of the good, good Samaritan. But what happens if we said something like the good Arab or the good ISIS person? Or I don't know what that would be called. Um, the good terrorist? I don't know. Uh, um, you know, something like that. That would cause just that, what? For those who are racist, the good black man. You know, oh no. Um, uh, for those uh, who live down farther south, like in Texas, the good Mexican. Oh, oh no, oh no. See, that's the kind of, 
the kind of imagery that, that, that Jesus' audience experienced. Like, wait, them? They're not even really people. Yeah, you see what I mean? And it just played on that racism. Uh, played on that now, on that character switch there. So uh, Matthew 7, uh, 24 through 27. And therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them may be compared to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then object lessons in Luke 9, 46 to 48. He uses the, the, the child. I mean, you know, they're saying, who's the greatest? And he pulls this child and says, whoever becomes like this, like this uh, is the greatest. The least has become the greatest. He also uses um, Proverbs. Um, Luke chapter 5, verse 31. Um and Jesus answered and said to them, It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. Um, also, uh, he revealed a lot about God and his kingdom. Um, Matthew 10, 27. Now, he didn't just reveal God, God with his character, he also revealed God with his words. Listen to what he says in Matthew 10, 27. Um, what... Uh, what I tell you in, uh, in the darkness, speak in the light, and what you uh, hear whispered in your ear, uh, proclaim upon the housetops. Hold on. Did I turn to the wrong place again? I swear, sometimes I, I turn to the wrong passage and... Well, I don't know where I was going with that one, so I'll use a different example. Um, Jesus is is talking to somebody and he says, good, "Good teaching." He says, "Why do you call me good? Only only God is good." You know, so we learn. We he taught, he taught things like that about God. That God is good. That God is you know all these different things. That God has compassion. That God you know is loving. Matthew six uh, twelve says. Um, I the book evidently has a lot of different things, but and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Um, now I know this is part of the Lord's prayer. I, it really kind of irritates me that Ma that Matthew ten reference is wrong. Um, and it's a second reference so far I've found in this slide that, that that's wrong. I did double check this, but I quoted from the book and must have been referencing other other uh, aspects that I w that I was missing. Um, Matthew 6, 12 uh, is talking about um, how things are done in God's kingdom. You forgive others. You know, um, talks about what it means for God's kingdom. You know, what what is that about? You know, they were expecting this this kingdom, you know, where Jesus was going to take in power, but he didn't. You know, he, he did it a different way. Um, not to say that the second coming will not happen, just to say that... Um, you know, the first coming was a lot different than the people were expecting. And so he revealed about God, he revealed, also revealed about his kingdom. Uh, for more on Jesus' teachings, um, you can look up uh, Encountering, the New, New, the Encountering the New Testament. Uh, by the way, that was by Walter Elwell and Robert Yar, Yarbo. Sorry, I'm having a very hard time pronouncing things. Um, he also clarified uh, doctrine. Uh, Matthew 24, 3-14 says... Um, uh, you know he, he's talking about he's talking about the end, and he clarified that. There's a lot of things that Jesus said in the Gospels that clarified doctrine that people were having a hard time with, with his coming, with the kingdom, with you know marriage and divorce and those kinds of things. Um, he just really brought a lot of clarity throughout his teachings, um, and that takes us to the end of uh, of this this um, lesson uh, where we talked about the life and ministry of Jesus. Oops. Hold on.